Want to find out how to cook this? Stay tuned. Hi Year 9 and welcome to today's lesson. So today's lesson I am going to talk to you about how you can prepare a high level dish to cater for many different diets that there are. Um, so the diet that I chose to plan this dish around was of a teenager um, because we've got the protein from the chicken. We've then got some vegetables. Um, you can also add more vegetables as well. Um, and also it's got a lot of different flavours in there. So it looks like a peeling dish that a teenager would like to have. Um, now, in terms of skill, you have got some um, butchery of a chicken breast. So I'm going to show you how to, to um, open that chicken, butterfly that chicken breast out. So you can stuff it with some garlic butter. Then we're going to wrap it in some palm ham. And then I'm going to make some roasted vegetables along the side. So I'm going to roast and hustle back some baby, pota baby to potatoes. Um, I've got a carrot, which I'm just going to cut up into some different angles. I've got some um, shallots and then I've also got some garlic as well. Um, you can flavour your dish any way that you want because it's a really versatile dish. So any herbs and spices that you and your family are particularly happy with, um, you can use that. Um, I've just got some Italian seasoning, salt and pepper. I've got some Chipotle chilli flakes and... Um, another little like wild garlic herb dip here and um, i've also just got a little garlic um oil here that i'm going to help marinate um all of the vegetables in but i've also got some butter which i'm going to make a garlic butter out of which i will then use to stuff my chicken and um, it's a great dish all you're going to need equipment wise is a pan lined with a bit of baking parchment um, and that's going to go into the oven. So it's a one um, dish wonder. So all you need to do is cook stuff in the oven. Um, you'll need chopping boards and a sharp knife as well. Um, just need to make sure that you are keeping your chicken away from your vegetables. So we're not having any cross contamination. So the first thing that you guys need to do is a little bit of vegetable prep. You need to do like your mise en place. So you've got to get things ready. So we've got to peel, we've got to chop, we've got to slice and we've just got to get things ready. So if you just bear with me, I'll get those done. Okay, so now that your vegetable prep is done, it's all about getting all of the marinade together and preparing the rest of your vegetables a little bit more. So all I've done with my shallots is I have halved them. So I have taken the skins off, halved them, and then I can place them straight into a mixing bowl. Uh, there's nothing in my mixing bowl at the moment, it is just plain. So this is just where I'm gonna add all of my ingredients together. Just move it a little bit more so you can see it there. Okay, and um, then what I've also got is I've got some garlic. So you might have seen in my um, time lapse that I just got a wooden spoon. I just crushed them a little bit underneath there and it just means that the skin can come off them a little bit better. So I'm just gonna cut those in half and then I'm going to put them in with my shallots. Now it's up to you if you want to add garlic, you can. If you want to mince your garlic, you can do. Um, just keeping them whole just stops them from burning a little bit more. So you can always just use them for flavour and then pick them out before you serve. Um, my carrot, so I've just top and tailed my carrot. And then I'm going to cut this at different angles because I'm thinking about my presentation later on. I'm thinking about how I can add height to my dish and how I can may maybe add some different textures. So I'm just going to take my carrot, I'm going to take my knife, and I'm just going to cut different angles so I'm leaving them fairly chunky because when we roast them we want them to keep their shape and we want to keep them quite interesting so I have just cut them at different angles of that so then when they're on the plate and I put them on the plate they've got just a little bit more interesting about them so we're going to place them into their mixing bowl now to make Hasselback potatoes, which is what I was talking about earlier, Hasselback potatoes have got a little bit more skill to them because it's the ones that um, I've got little slices down. So we don't slice all the way through them. Um, you just slice to a little bit to the bottom and then they kind of like when they roast, they open out a little bit and they get more of the different flavors from the marinade that we've got in there. So in order for you to do this, you can get two wooden spoons and place them on your chopping board. And then all you're gonna do is with one of your potatoes, place it in between your knife um, your two wooden spoons and um, you can use a metal spoon if you want um, if you don't want to damage the wooden spoons but I'm not I'm not worried about that because I'm not going to apply too much pressure what you're then going to do is with your knife you're just going to start by giving like little cuts little slices so it, the, the spoons just prevent you from cutting all the way through so you want to just gently slice through and um, think about the thickness now when it gets to about here what I do is I prefer to just turn 
my potato the other way around so then you can start slicing from the other way just gives you a little bit more grip onto your potato so there i've just added my slices so i'll just come to the camera so you can see a little bit more so i've added my slices in there so you can see um, that i haven't gone all the way down to the bottom i've just got those slices in there and that's what we call hasselback potatoes um, so what that happens then is that all the marinade can go down into the middle. So do that with your potatoes. Now this dish that I'm doing and the quantities that I'm showing you is enough for one person. So if you're going to do this for your family, you might need to increase the quantities. Um, and so you can get it a nice dish ready for them. Like I said before, in terms of the vegetables, um, you could add and take away any of the different vegetables that you want. If you don't like anything, you can take it out. If you want to add anything, you can do. So broccoli works well with this. So you just add, your, you might want to serve it with some steamed broccoli on the side. That will add a little bit of freshness. Um, you can swap your potatoes out for sweet potatoes. Um, I just find that these little baby potatoes um, do give you a little bit more of a higher skill because we are preparing them slightly differently. But if you wanted to just use normal potatoes and do like some roast potatoes, you can do that as well. You can use normal onions. That's not a problem. Um, normal onions work fine as well. So once you've done that, you need to think about the marinade that you want in this dish here. Now I'm going to add some of my garlic oil that I made earlier. So all I did to prepare this was I added, um, just crushed some garlic up, add it into some oil, and then I just fried it lightly into a pan, added some extra little herbs in there as well. And um, add a little bit of salt. I'm going to add some Italian seasoning, just so it adds a little bit of extra depth of flavor. And um, now I like a little bit of heat, so I'm going to add a little bit of chipotle, and I'm going to add some black pepper also. From that chilli oil, you might also want to get a tablespoon and you can just get some of the oil instead of the garlic and just add a couple of tablespoons of oil. Now this is classed as your marinade and so this will start going into your flavours, uh, um, into your vegetables and they'll start to go around. So give them a light, light missile mix around in your bowl making sure that you're getting all of those flavors going on every single surface of the vegetables that you've got in there okay now you can leave that for a little while to help the um, flavors just like blend together a little more and um, but i'm going to get them straight on to my um, pan and um, so this is just a baking tray that i've lined with greasy paper i'm just going to add them in there you could add some peppers actually some roasted some roast peppers is really nice and make sure that they're all a single there and then that's just going to go straight into your oven and cook for about 15 minutes before you're going to add your chicken so i'll add that into the oven and then we'll come back and i'll show you what you need to do with your chicken okay so while your vegetables are in the oven doing a little bit of their first cook and getting through some of those flavors and getting a little bit softer and a bit more caramelized and um, it's time for you to prepare your chicken so make sure that you've got a clean work surface that you've washed your hands and that you have got um everything ready so it's all in like hand placed distance so what i've got is i've got parma ham so what i'm going to do is i'm going to wrap my chicken in parma ham and that will kind of like give it a little bit more flavor on the outside um, and it'll also help keep it together so i've got them already laid out and um, you don't have to use parma ham if you don't want to you could use streaky bacon that works really well and um, but it doesn't have to be encased in anything and um, in terms of getting your chicken ready so i've just got a chicken breast from the supermarket it and you might just want to tidy it up a little bit because sometimes they leave a little bit of sinew and a little bit of skin and a little bit of fat on so i use scissors because that's um easier so if there is a little bit of skin or there is a little bit of sinew just use your scissors to gently just chop that away and just to make sure that you've got a really nice neat bit of chicken now we want to try and keep the rest of the chicken the front of the chicken quite nice and it's the back of the chicken where you want to start thinking about what we're going to do is we're going to do something called butterflying so if you think about your chicken breast all you're going to do is you're just going to do a little bit of a slice so you're going to open it out so it's like a book that way so the easiest way to do that i've got a boning knife which we have in school and um, but any sharp knife will do the trick and then all you're going to do is you're trying to make it as thin as possible so it's all the right the same size so you're just going to do one cut through the middle until it reaches the thinnest part 
So basically my cut here is the same thickness of the skin down at the bottom. So you're wanting it to be the same thickness deep. Then all you need to do is I'm just turning it away from myself is you're going to just gently try and butterfly out. So all I'm doing is I'm just peeling back the side. So I'm just going to bring it closer to you so you can see what I've done. So I've basically I've just cut down the middle here and then I'm just folding it out to open like that. So I've just made small little incisions and cuts. So I haven't cut all the way through so you can still see the back, but I've just made and then I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side. So again, take your knife and then just gently make some slices. So you've got to be very, very patient and gentle. Okay, and then it will open out and then you've got a piece of chicken, which is the same thickness all the way across. And then you've got two bits of sides that will fold in as well. So if you want, so just get a bit of cling film over the top and then you very gently, you're not going to bash it using the corner of your rolling pin. So you're not going to go like that. You need to use the full length. So you just very gently, Okay, until you've got a nice thickness all the way. Then you can peel back the cling film and then you're ready to add your different types of um, fillings. Now, um, I've got some garlic, just some garlic butter that I've made. So all I got is some um, the garlic that I made before that I showed you. Okay, I just got that garlic and mixed it in with some unsalted butter and um, mixed it around and then rolled it um, into like a long shape and then into cling film and just placed that in the fridge until it hardened up. Um, you can place it in the freezer um, and that will help it when it's cooking. Um, it will take it longer to melt. So then when you finish, it's kind of like a little chicken kia all the way through. So that's the kind of, that's the kind of theme that I'm going for. So place your butter okay down the center and then this is also going to keep it um, nice and moist while you're cooking it and it's also going to inject some of that flavor in there as well so you could add some mozzarella cheese you could add some um, tomatoes you could add some um, basil leaves and layer it up and kind of make it um, a Italian flame that way so then all we need to do is we need to start rolling it up so you're going to get the sides fold them over and then you're just going to roll it until everything is encased and you've got what looks like your chicken breast back again. Now, because we have cut it apart, that's why this parma ham is really good. Because what it does is, because it's got a layer of fat in it, when that fat melts, it gives flavour, but it also helps seal it together. So I'm just going to roll that around. Okay, so I've just done one slice and then I'll get to my other slice. Place it on the top there and just roll it around okay and there I have my chicken and then it's got stuffed in the middle and it's all enclosed together so none of the juices will come out and it'll keep its shape and it also this um, parma ham will also go really nice and crispy so we're thinking again about texture and um, thinking long term as well that you can slice it into three for your presentation and you've got a nice little bit of um, the garlic butter in the middle then you'll have the chicken and then you'll have the parma ham on the outside so what we'll do is um, just need to wait for my vegetables to cook a little bit longer, then I'll place them on top of my vegetables. They will cook through and the chicken will cook with it. So we'll get to that bit and um, I'll come back to you. Okay, so thy, my pan has been in the oven for about 15 minutes. I did halfway through just move the vegetables around a little bit with a wooden spoon just to make sure that they were all even in my oven. Um, so now what you need to do is once you've got your um, vegetables that are slightly cooked, so I'll give you a closer look at what they look like so you can see Okay, so when they've got colour on them, you can see that the um, carrots have got a little bit of colour on them and the potatoes as well have got a nice um, little bit of colouring and each of their little um, pockets have been opened up as well. Now, we're going to cook the chicken in with this as well. So all you need to do is just make a little bit of room um, around the outside. Now, what I also like to do is just to protect the chicken, the um, bottom of the chicken, I just like to move some of the onions into the middle and that's just going to give them a little bit of a bed for the chicken to sit on. So if you just use your wooden spoon and just do a small little bed, that is fine. And then you're going to use one hand to pick your chicken up because you then also then got to put this into the oven. So if you want to put your chicken on, then wash your hands, then pop it into the oven, that's fine. But if you've got 
if you're able to do it this way, then you can do it this way. So you get your chicken and you're just going to place it into the middle. Okay, doesn't need anything else on it. Um, it will cook all the way through. So then you can get it into the oven. And um, if you just use your other hand that you didn't have your chicken on, pop that into the oven and it will take around 15 minutes. So what you need to make sure is that your chicken is cooked all the way through. So 15 to 20 minutes will be enough time for that to happen. Okay, so when your 20 minutes is up for your chicken, if you've got a food probe, you can use that to check that it is 75 degrees all the way in the middle, and then you're ready for your plating. So I've got my plate ready, and um, I've got also a little side dish for any of the extra vegetables that I have. Um, I have made myself an extra little bit of, um, it's like a burnt butter garlic. Um, sauce to go alongside and um, I've got everything that I need to help with my presentation of the dish so I'll just get mine out of the oven and we can check the temperature of the chicken okay. so the smells in here are amazing so I don't need to keep telling you like the different the garlic the onions uh, keep coming through it just smells intense and amazing so just place your food probe into the middle of your chicken and make sure that it reads 75 or higher and then just to be sure I like to check in threes so I check in three different places just to double check that it is cooked all the way through and that I have just ticked that off my mind and I'm happy with that. So that is 75 all the way through. Um, so think about your plating and think about how you might want it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get my chicken, place it onto my chopping board and then I'm going to use a sharp knife and I'm going to cut it um, at diagonals all the way through. So I'm just using some tongues and I've just got my really sharp knife and I'm just going to cut through and then what you can do is you can place that on the plate and it'll look really nice so I'm just going to use my fish slice to get those and then place them in the middle okay and then you can just gently move them so you can see the centers as well so just don't think I cooked all the way through that one there so there we go so we've got the flavour and the colour already going through there. Then you can choose your vegetables. So when you're thinking about food presentation, chefs always like to go into threes. It's more appealing on the eye. So if you just choose the three that you think look the best, and then again, your carrots are nice and caramelised. So you want to think about the height that those are going to give and the different colours that they're going to give. So I've got my threes. And then with the shallots and the onions and the garlic that I've got, those have nice, car nicely caramelised at the bottom. So I'm just going to get those. And then I can place them. What I might have actually should have done is place them underneath the chicken. So there's not a problem with that. If you feel like you're getting a good idea as you go, um, just go back. So just gently slide them off the plate. Don't worry that there's a bit of chicken juice there because that's just going to get the mingled in with the caramelized onions that we've got and the garlic so just pop them underneath so then when you cut through and you slice your chicken up you're going to get a nice mouthful of these really sweet caramelized onions as well so place them onto your plate right in the middle then again I'll just get my chicken well that's now decided to all fall apart not a problem Ooh. This is what happens when I try and do things. Okay, see that just sits a little bit more nicer onto the plate there. Okay, then just give my little my hands a wipe. Just move these out of the way so you'll be able to see my presentation a little bit better. So any of the rest of the vegetables that you've got, okay, you can use them as an extra accompaniment to your dish. And so this is what they usually do in restaurants too. So they give you the vegetables on the plate and then if you want to add some more, then you can have them more as well. So here then I have got my sauce. So I'll just drizzle a little bit of that sauce over the chicken as well. But then it is there as a side dish. So as you can see, um, it's got the presentation there. We've got the different colours. We've got the different textures. 
okay so you can courgette is a good one so you could add some courgette onto there too okay but there is my final dish so i have got stuffed chicken with vegetables so do have a go at home and uh, make sure that you send me your photos so i can see what you have done but otherwise good luck at cooking this high level dish